Hey, what's up, Zach here. You know, when talking about a basketball, tennis, pickleball, volleyball shoe, really any court sport shoe, most of them share a lot of the same characteristics with just little tweaks and mods on them to make them more kind of sport specific. And so even though the Skechers Viper Court Pro is marketed toward pickleball, it has the overall design profile to really be used in any one of those court sports. It's just, is it really great for any one of them? Let's find out. The first thing I noticed about the uppers of the Viper Court Pro is just how much mesh is in them. It goes all the way from the medial side around the ankle collar and then air into the forefoot. Now this mesh is a very dense weave and kind of chain linking of textile and TPU fibers. Now the tongue on these is pretty porous, pretty mesh as well. But if you look at the breathability test on these, you know, they heat it up 152.6 degrees, cooled down another 68.3. And you know, for a shoe with this much mesh in it, I really thought that it was gonna really not heat up at all, especially because when I had the heat gun on there, the heat was just blowing out of the bottom of the tongue. And I thought, man, this is, it probably is not gonna get up above 100 degrees of heating, but I think because of the removable insole, just how much EVA is in that removable insole, I think this is actually what's holding on to a lot of the heat. I wouldn't say it, they're terrible for overheating, but I think if you're worried about that overheating on a really hot day, I think replacing the insole is really gonna help that. And I think it's gonna help some other things once we get to the midsole section. But getting into the lockdown of the Viper Court Pros, it is a pretty rugged reinforced lace line and a really high backed heel counter. You do get a runner's knot in there. I would suggest using that even though the heel counter is really high, the entry into these is very, very wide. The tongue isn't gusseted, so you really do want this to be, you know, kind of enveloping the back of your ankle more with that runner's knot. The one thing I will say is if you do buy these, get a different pair of laces in there because when you tie these down, it feels like they're just stretching into oblivion. And after the second time I wore them, I was starting to get some fraying here. So, I mean, not a huge deal, but I would just maybe put a bubble lace in there, a little bit of a stronger lace. I do have some links in the description. Uh, and that'll really help the lockdown. And on the upper durability test, 10 second tie grit sandpaper. I mean, the burr does try to get through that drag guard. However, it does not get into the meshing underneath of it. So even though it is a pretty light and flexible toe drag guard, it still does hold up really well, especially to a gritty outdoor surface. Now when talking about the midsole of the Viper Court Pro, I guess I actually should just cut open the removable insole because the Skechers, you know, Viper Court is made with their arch fit, right? But the thing I remember about Skechers arch fit products is a lot of them produce their arch support feeling by the removable insole that's in them. And even though their arch fit insoles actually have a pretty decent stack of EVA in them, it actually says EVA on the side here, they're still going to bottom like a removable insole will because number one, it's not attached to anything. You're going to get a lot of shearing and heat on there. But you know, number two, it's just a much thinner piece of foam under there. So, you know, your body will really tell you when this starts to bottom out, you start to lose that feeling of arch support. You know, you might start to feel some more aches and pains versus what you did, you know, in the first couple weeks of wearing the shoe. So if you want to prevent that, you can and just take these out and put an orthotic in. But speaking of your body telling you about their aches and pains, that brings me to today's sponsor, which is Dr. Hoy's pain relieving gels and creams. And those of you that have been following this channel for a little while know I've been going through a really bad bout of jumper's knee. And I actually took out the, the Dr. Hoy's, the Arnica Boost anti-inflammatory cream for it. And honestly, you know, I know this is a sponsored spot, but I can just tell you straight out, I mean, I know it's convenient, but putting this on twice a day to both my patellar tendons has eased my pain so much since really kind of getting to the peak of that inflammation. Now they do come in just a pain relieving gel as well as a rub on too. Now these are just for straight up pain relief and then the anti-inflammatory actually, you know, produces a natural anti-inflammatory effect. Now remember these are water-based, there's no toxins or parabens in them. So that they're not like the more prescription or what used to be prescription topical anti-inflammatories, a little bit easier on your body as well as on your skin. You can see the that the tube here is actually starting to get a little low. I'm actually gonna have to call them and get another one. So if you do wanna pick up any one of the Dr. Hoy's products, I will leave a link in the description below. And back to the midsoles. Now getting into the real meat of the midsole, you actually do have an entire bed of Skechers Ultra Flight Foam, which they say is a TPU based foam. It feels a lot like a very dense Nike Phylon foam, but suffice to say, 
they are saying it is a TPU based foam. Now, the interesting thing is the strobe board on the Viper Core Pro is fantastic. It is a very thick strobe with a lot of molding capabilities to your foot. So if you are just using the straight up arch fit inserts, once those do bottom, you actually are going to get a little bit of molding here in the strobe board, which is a super premium upgrade to a shoe. A lot of the strobe boards are just really nothing. This one actually has a little bit of shock absorbing and more custom molding capabilities. The shank is outsole based, but man, is it stiff and broad. So if you are looking for a shoe, it is going to kind of retain its shape from side to side. This is a really good pickup. Now, if you look at that ultra flight foam though, on the bounce height test, 24.5 centimeters in the heel and 24 centimeters in the forefoot. It definitely does not have a lot of that bouncy spring back to it, but for it being such a bottom light foam, and it does feel very bottom light underfoot, it is still incredibly stable. So, you know, more the midsoles properties or the midsoles capabilities in the Viper Court Pro, it to me isn't necessarily to propulse you forward or give you jump or bounce, but it's more to keep you very centered and very balanced on the ground. But number two, a bottom light feeling because it is really hard to get a foam that is bottom light feeling, but also ultra stable. But the ultra flight foam definitely has both of those in spades. But getting into what is definitely my favorite part of the Viper Court Pro is its outsole tread. Now you look at it, it looks a lot like the Adidas Ubersonic 4 tread. It comes up nice and high over the medial toe box. But what I like about it is, is the razor kind of quasi herringbone pattern on it is textured. I love a textured kind of micro and macro type grip pattern of a shoe. And what I love about this is, is that the spaces in between the really flat herringbone or really flat razors is pretty wide. So you can grab traction on an indoor court, you can grab it on a slick outdoor court, or you can keep traction, but also pretty nimble grip on a really kind of gritty outdoor asphalt or concrete court. So it really kind of runs the gambit, right? Now I would say the worst surface for it is definitely indoor. However, it is not bad on indoors, but it really does shine on the outdoor courts, really no matter what the texture is. So if you're going on multiple different types of outdoor surfaces, this is really gonna have you covered. But if you look at the speed ratio of the Viper Court Pro, it only comes in at a 1.74, which is kind of what I expected, a little bit lower. But you know, if you look at the full length tread pattern of it and just the overall profile of the shoe, like I said, this shoe is meant to feel light and be stable from side to side, as well as front to back. So I think if you can bring the speed to it, the shoe is gonna give you a really lightweight and ultra stable product underfoot with really tremendous traction to kind of go along with it. And speaking of that, if you look at the outsole durability test on these, you know, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, you know, not even a scuff on them really, maybe just kind of cleared off some of that micro traction on there, but really nothing else. So in terms of durability, but also really great grip, no matter where you're gonna put them on, uh, this is, I would say, the outsole tread, one of the most elite products I've seen on a court shoe, especially for multiple surfaces this year. All right, but looking at the fit of the Viper Court Pro, like I said, it is a pretty nice, easy entry into the shoe. A narrow foot, I probably would be going down a half size on these. A medium foot, if you're wearing a bulky sock or throwing a bulky orthotic in there, I think you can go true to size as long as you're in the runner's knot. And if you're a 2E foot, true to size, you do have a little bit more of an extended break in in the distal uppers of the shoe. Not so much width, but they bend and snap a lot when you first put them on. So just be wary of that. It does go away. Um, but that was like two or three times I had to wear them before that went away. Now for the snake bitten foot, right? It's going to feel really good at first with the arch fit in there. So, you know, ball of foot pain, heel pain, things like that for initial step in, it's going to be great. However, for all those things down the road, I probably would be throwing an orthotic in them just because that foam, yes, it's light, it's pretty durable and stable, but it, it's just not the most forgiving foam underfoot because it is a little bit more of a flat profile of foam. Not uncomfortable by any means, but um, if it were me, I'd probably be replacing the arch fit in there to kind of live up to that comfort that you're getting in the step in of it. With that, I think they're fantastic for all those, especially for someone that kind of needs a little more of a light shoe, but also for ankle sprain protection, this is kind of like a, a nice marriage between the two. And last but not least, getting into the performance of the Viper Cord Pro, you know, what sports do they play best? Are they really elite for any one of them? I, I will say, I know they are marketed toward pickleballers, but if you are a tennis player looking for kind of a marriage between the Ubersonic and the Adidas Barricade, this is a really kind of good tweener shoe between those. They play long court really well, just as well as they play short court. 
They're not as forgiving as some other more premium tennis shoes out there, but their ease of glide, their ease of grip on the court and just kind of the feeling underneath of the foot of that bottom light feeling does give you a lot of confidence to haul for balls kind of back and forth on the court. Now for pickleball, like I said, they shuffle around so well and for those really kind of short court movements, really quick movements and really stable side to side movements, they are fantastic. So I, I would say, yeah, I mean, they're marketed for pickleball. The footwork is, is really good for pickleball, also for tennis. Outdoor basketball though, if you're looking for a bottom light shoe, something that almost feels like the Way of Wade uh, 808, but in a little bit more of kind of like a, a utility type shoe, a little bit more kind of rugged type shoe, I think this is kind of a nice option for you, you know, beside those. I, I, the thing that I kept coming to on the Viper Court Pros was just they were kind of like a, a utility shoe, a little more of a rugged shoe, right? Um, they just did everything really well, but they were also kind of rugged enough in the outsole and the midsole was durable enough to kind of hold up to pretty much whatever you put them through. Even if you're a heavier player, as long as you have an orthotic in them, they can really kind of run the gambit of whatever you're doing, even if the surface is really unforgiving or the sports you're playing, you know, you're really pounding them from the pickleball court to the tennis court to the basketball court. Definitely a nice shoe to have kind of in your quiver for pretty much any sport you want to play. Um, and, and so I was a little bit surprised because I actually did have the Viper Quartz, the, the other line in the Skechers Pickleball category. And these ones, the containment for me just didn't re really do it. And so I was kind of dubious of the Viper Court Pros. But whereas the Viper Courts are much more of just kind of like a comfort cushion type kind of casual shoe and, and okay for pickleball, just you can't really be playing too crazily side to side because of the containment. The Viper Court Pros kind of have everything the Viper Court does not in them. Much more of like that, like I said, that rugged shoe, whereas the Viper Court's more of kind of like that cushioned plush type feeling shoe and they do feel very plush. So um, that's kind of, you know, the, the differences between the two if you're looking for a comparison. But I, of course, love to hear your thoughts on the Viper Court Pros as well as the Viper Quartz is kind of the Skechers Pickleball line, kind of court shoe line I'm calling it in general. If you tried them, do you like them? Do you like other kind of tennis specific or basketball specific models more? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see my top five favorite pickleball shoes right now go under the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. See you in the next one.